Look at all of this. People were probably doing this about a year ago when this started, uh, so I guess we're a little late to the game, but overall... Alright, so today I wanted to do a little quick video about my editing process. I haven't really done a video like this and I sort of want to get this out and just document the whole process I suppose even just for myself but hopefully you guys learn something from it. My hope with this is that this is going to be one of those videos where I can just update it yearly as I get more gear, equipment and everything else and then show you guys how that progresses year over year. Keep in mind before we get started this is really just a glimpse into my editing process and how I do it. I'm a one-man band right now so that doesn't mean that this is the best way or the most efficient way necessarily to do it but it's what I do and it's what works for me. That said though, if you do have any suggestions and you wanna let me know what I could do to improve, what you do or what your process is, then let me know down in the comments below. Let me know what you do for your process, how I can improve mine, any tips that I can take away from this. And with that, I think let's get started. Real quick though, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and also the little bell to get notified when I post all my future videos from now on. Thanks. All right, so typically after I come up with an idea, I go ahead and write the script for the video. Now, I try to keep the script as condensed as possible and usually do a few passes through it just to make sure that all the info in it is relevant and condensed. I use Fade In for my software. The great thing about it is that they have a free version, so if you ever need a script writing program, they have a free trial version that you can use. I think the paid version is somewhere about 70, 80 bucks. I'll put it on the screen if it's different. Great thing about writing a script is you can keep your thoughts organized and the nice thing is that you can save it and then I usually import it into a teleprompter app as well if I ever need it or if I'm using a teleprompter to do a video. Now, once I finish shooting all of my material, to stay organized right off the bat makes life so much easier. Usually what I'm doing at this point is I take all the info off the card and transcribe it into a location I've already set up where I set up my folders that I usually have for every project that I do, especially on YouTube videos. Usually one is for the raw import and the data or the transcribed data. Then I have another one, for example, for color uh, graded clips. I also save the finished video in the same folder as well. So if I ever need to find footage from that video or the full final video itself, I have them all organized and I can go to that specific month or whatever and find the video I'm looking for. Okay, so first up, I open Premiere Pro and set up my project. This is number one every time. I typically start by making all of the typical folders that I use for a project in order to stay organized. Side note here, if you want me to do a video about how to set up a project or what project settings I'm using or how to set up Premiere or Resolve or any other program that you're using, let me know and I'll do a video on that as well. So I know some people usually like to work by saving multiple versions. I usually don't save multiple versions of the same project. Although if your video projects start getting a lot bigger, they start using a lot of like shared assets or team projects. Sometimes it is better to save different versions of the project as you're going along. That way you always have a previous version to revert back to so that the project itself doesn't get so unruly when you're editing through it. The more clips you add, the more edits you do, the more unruly the file becomes. Sometimes it can get a little hard for your computer to process. So sometimes the best thing to do is use your shared assets and save multiple versions of the project after that. What I do like to do, however, to make things a lot easier on myself is make different timelines or sequences in Premiere to keep the different versions organized. I'll usually make one for the raw footage and the import, another one when I finished and color graded my clips, and I open one or two more after that, usually for the final edit, after I've done a couple of passes through the footage. For non-linear editors, the edits obviously are non-destructive. You can always go back and find the clip you're looking for and re-edit it, but I usually end up saving another version if I want to try something different, for example, or 
if I'm changing something significantly like the order of the clips. This helps a lot, especially if you're showing different versions to different people and you wanna make sure that you have whatever you tried in the one version saved and ready to go, and then you can just kind of click through them. After initially importing all the raw footage and the clips, I export out to Resolve in order to color grade. I'm not gonna go over that here because it's kind of a fairly long and involved process, but I did make a video where I cover that whole process and my color grading workflow. I'll link that up in the corner uh, so that you guys can watch it. Obviously click on that if you're interested and you're, you wanna find out more about color grading workflows, but then come back and finish watching this video. As a, as a matter of fact, just leave this one playing as well and play that one. At the, at, watch both at the same time. Actually, you know what? If you just, just leave my videos on forever, just make a playlist of all my videos and then just keep looping it in the back. Even when you're off to work, just let my videos play. All right, once it's color graded, I'm importing back into Premiere and I usually go through and make another couple of passes, any final changes and edits. And of course, that's all done in another sequence in order to keep, like I said, everything organized and make sure that all of my ideas flow over time. All right, and with that, last stage is off to exporting. Premiere does this really weird thing where the contrast is off when you export, so there's a LUT for that that actually fixes it. So I do that, save it to my folder. After that, it's off to YouTube wherever or wherever the final version of the video is going. All right, one very special shout out that has made a world of a difference though, which is an upgrade that I did make to my computer that I wanted to share with you guys, is this Samsung SSD right here. It has been an absolute game changer. So I have the older hookup, which is the SATA 3 hookup, but it's not as fast as the new NVMe drives, which you can install, they just look like a little card. Those are still so much faster than even the one that I upgraded to, and definitely mine is faster than the old spitting hard drives, whatever you call those ones. And it's saved a tremendous amount of time, especially when working with projects and video files. That's it for this video though. Hopefully you guys learned something, you guys picked something up. If you guys did learn anything, let me know down in the comments below. If you guys have any tips for how I can improve my workflow or what your workflow looks like, let us know down in the comments below as well. I would really also appreciate it if you guys hit that like button, hit subscribe, share this video with someone that you think they could use it, uh, someone that's getting into video editing or someone that just wants to see another workflow. Uh, and if you guys have any topics that you want me to cover either related to this video or something else, let me know and I can do a video on that as well. Until next time though, get out there and create something. La de vedere.